Good day everyone. Welcome to our week 2. And our lesson is about the use of tools, equipment, instrument, and utensils by following the standard procedures. So this is the coverage of our week 2 food processing topic. Before we proceed with our discussion, let us first have the expectations for the class. So specifically, this lesson will help you, number one, to interpret food processing procedure, number two, to apply standard procedures in using tools, equipment, and instruments as well as utensils. 3. Calibrate tools, equipment, instrument, and utensils. 4. Follow procedures in sanitizing tools, equipment, instruments, and utensils. And number 5. Use equipment, instrument, and utensils according to job requirements and manufacturer's specifications. Let us start with a brief introduction. So one of the vital activities to be done before starting any food processing activity is inspecting and checking the tools, instrument, utensils, and equipment as well as the machines to be used. There should be one worker assigned to do the condition monitoring. Then. Ano nga ba itong condition monitoring? It is the process of monitoring a parameter of condition in machinery like vibration and temperature in order to identify a significant change that is indicative of developing fault. And how do we apply? procedures in using equipment, tools, instruments, and utensils. Here, it is important to review all procedures regarding the use of standard measuring device to ensure that they will be properly used in accordance with the manufacturer's specification. Being familiar with the procedure in using a standard measuring device like salinometer, thermometer, weighing scale, or a measuring cup or spoon will enable you to use the appropriate measuring device for a specific food processing activity and it is also important to make work systematic and accurate. So here are the procedures in using standard measuring device like salinometer. So in using a salinometer, first one, we have to prepare the brine solution. What is a brine solution? It is a mixture of water and salt. So after preparing the brine solution, let us pour the brine solution into the cylinder. Like, what can you see on the picture? Then, you can dip the salinometer in a brine solution and wait for the reading. Then, after seeing the reading on the salinometer, what you're going to do is to record the reading. And lastly, clean the instrument after its use. Now, we have here the procedure in using the thermometer. First one, we have to dip the thermometer in the boiling liquid. Then, if we can see, let us record the reading by 0 degrees Celsius or 0 degrees Fahrenheit. And after that, let us clean the thermometer after use. Number three, how are we going to use weighing scale? 
let us always remember and let us check if the hand of the weighing scale is at zero. Then, let's put the food on the weighing scale and record the reading in grams or kilograms. Four, if we are going to use glassware like graduated cylinder and beaker, here is how we're going to use this one. Number one, pour liquid ingredients into the cylinder, beaker, or flask. Then, bring the cylinder to the eye level. So, gagawin natin, huwag natin siyang iaangat. Huwag natin hahawakan. We have to put the cylinder or the beaker sa flat surface like table na hindi gumagalaw. Then, get the reading at the lower meniscus. Makikita nyo yung parang crystallized na slight crescent moon. Yun yung meniscus. Yun sa ilalim ng uh, parang mirror sa tubig pag nilagay nyo. Ayun. Yun ang babasahin yung reading sa lower pag naglagay kayo ng tubig or water sa ating beaker or graduated cylinder. Then after that, as you can see, record the reading. Susulat nyo na kung ano yung reading ng ating graduated cylinder or nung tubig or liquid na minimeasure natin. Then, clean after each use. So, how are we going to use measuring cups? Say, for example, we are measuring dry ingredients. First one, we have to prepare the materials that we are going to use. Then, gently spoon the ingredients into the cup, filling the cup to overflow. Level off with a metal spatula or straight edge knife. Note, do not scoop the ingredients using the cup itself because it packs the cup too much and the measurement won't be precise. So, hindi natin dapat ipapak or sisiksikin yung ingredients na measure natin kapag gumagamit tayo ng measuring cups. That's why we are advised to use spoon or scooping. Then, you have to measure the ingredients over the plate or bowl so you can catch the excess and put it back in the container. If we are using cups for liquid ingredients naman, just like what we are, what I have said a while ago about sa beaker and graduated cylinder, same lang ang paggamit ng measuring cup for liquid ingredients. So, you have to pour the liquid on the level of the surface ng measuring cups, then have the measuring lines at eye level to be sure the exact measurement. So, note, you have to measure liquids at eye level. Meaning, place the cup on the flat surface and crouch down so your eyes are at the same level as the cup in order to check the accuracy of the amount of the cup. Now, how are the equipment, tools, and utensils calibrated? First, let us define calibration. It is the process where measurement of a test instrument are compared against those taken by standard device with known accuracy. So, ang accuracy ng isang uh, bagay or uh, ng isang equipment or tools ay kailangan kinakalibrate. So, it plays an important critical role in quality assurance and compliance for the numerous industries. But it holds importance for process uh, such as food and beverage industry with strict controls and required. So, those controls have to be very precise and to achieve this, you need to highly accurate measuring 
tools. So kapag hindi accurate ang tools na ginagamit natin or the measuring device na ginagamit natin, hindi rin magiging maganda ang output or product na gagawin natin sa food processing. So that is how equipment and tools be calibrated. So why do you need to calibrate tools and equipment and utensils? Bakit kailangan nating i-calibrate 'yon? So it helps in saving the energy. Tama. It optimizes the quality. It provides traceable standards. It optimizes performance and it reduces unexpected failures. So lahat ng 'yan ay mahalaga. Kaya natin kinakalibrate ang ating equipment tools and utensils. Sabi nga dito, para hindi hindi poor, hindi fair, hindi lang good, dapat great ang performance ng ating mga equipment tools and utensils. That's why we are calibrating them. So, here are some measuring tools that we need to calibrate time to time. We have the weighing scale. Dapat na-check natin ang accuracy nito. See to it that the, hands is, the hand is pointed at the zero in empty weighing scale. So, kapag hindi wala na sa zero yung hand niyan, ibig sabihin, pwedeng madaya kayo kung kayo bumibili or baka mapaaway pa or mapahamak tayo or hindi magiging maganda ang ating output. Another one, we have to check the accuracy of the thermometer. So, to check the accuracy of the thermometer, we have to dip the thermometer into hot food to see if the mercury rises to the desired temperature. So, kung hindi na gumagalaw yung reading ng ating thermometer, then we need to calibrate our thermometer. And that ends our lesson for today. I hope you learned something a lot. And remember, in TLE, matututo ka na, kikita ka pa. Till next time, goodbye!